How did this 19 year old kid make over $30,000 in profit last month? 13% on 22,000, like 25, 26,000. This video, we talked to Rashad Mamnani, a seven figure Amazon seller who reveals the secrets to his success. He's a tampon. <laughs> and at the end of this video, he reveals exactly how you can do the same, starting with as little as $500 right now. Hi Rish, where are we? We are at warehouse. Let's go take a look. Let's go. What is all this right here? So this is deliveries from today. I think just UPS has came so far. FedEx. This is just from this is just from today. Yeah, just from today. Okay. How many packages is this? Not too many. I think probably like maybe hundred pairs. So. Is this like a standard day or less or more? It's a stand, pretty standard. It's pretty standard. Day. But I mean, you should have seen Q4 packages up to the window, all the way to here, all packages. Jeez, and you're taking the boxes in, unpackaging, repackaging, kind and of setting them out. I'm gonna take them inside, sort of my employees, and they'll take care of that process. Okay, let's go take a look. Let's go. Wow. Chill, bro. Hold on, I gotta plug the sign in. Wow. Come on in. <laughs> God hey, damn. Hey. Money bag, money bag. So I'm in the booth with a money bag. Right now. Dig on the bridge where the money at. Yo. Give me a load, I ain't coming back. Yo. I make a shoot where your stomach get. So it looks like it's, it's mostly shoes. I know people sell like a bunch of other stuff on Amazon as well. Are you pretty much strictly sneakers? I do a lot of sneakers just because I've done shoes for the past four years, not just Amazon, like in general. So that's like our market. Mm -hmm. um, but I've gotten burned a lot of times just selling, you know, normal stuff like tampons. Oh, These are tampons. <laughs> <laughs> and then over here, I'm going you know, to show that I got some soap there. Some soap? Dude. The, I mean, the margin on that kind of stuff, it's such a cheap product. You're going to make, okay, you make 30%, but you yeah. make 30% on $3. Yeah, you got to be so volume. I don't make 30% on $100. So you're doing Amazon yourself, and that's FBA and FBM. Can you walk me through the differences between those? FBM inventory is I list it, and I ship it when the buyer purchases an item. So all of this stuff back Basically, here. Basically, all the stuff back here. And FBA, you can see up there, I have a bunch of shipments going out. Uh, we prepackage the items, and they get to Amazon. It's kind of like consignment. They get to Amazon, get checked in, and then sell, and Amazon fulfills it for me. Okay, so these are all just multiple items. In yeah, like these ones are all backpacks. In and that's okay with Amazon, They're, they can intake bulk. Exactly, we tell them what's in each box so they know when it comes in, they can process all of it and list it for me. So what's what's all these boxes back here? That's a lot of boxes. Uh, they're still FBM inventory. So I pre-pack all of my shoes. So when they do sell, all we gotta do is just slap a label on it. How many pairs is, is this? Like 560, I think. Are these all the same product or is right here? No, no, there's a couple of different products. I know I can't say, you know. You can't, you can't give a sauce. All right, so up here on your left, you see all these, these are all returns. This is a mess. Yeah, it's all returns, dude. Look at this. So people ship back items however they want to, and they go to my UPS box. That's where all my packages go. Uh, we have returns over there that are already done that process, and they're going to either go to Amazon, get returned, or go to eBay, or the death pile back there. So some of the stuff I might try selling, like this guy took my box. Let's see. All right, you, <laughs> you can throw that there. This one, don't know where the shoe is. <laughs> Uh, we have used shoes, so maybe throw them on eBay or something like that. Huh. How common are, are returns and stuff like this happening? Very common. Uh, we're almost at $20,000 in returns just for this one. $20,000 in return. 71 return requests. Uh, that's just from the past, like, I don't even know, maybe like a week or two. People like, oh, it doesn't fit. Like, literally, all of people say, like, too large, wrong item, too late, no longer needed, too small. And it's still worth it to, with $20,000 in returns? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like 10% return rate. If I did 200, 220K in a month, 20K it's a return. It's not too bad. All right, so let's let's talk some numbers. You did two hundred and twenty thousand last month. Correct. In sales. Correct. What's your margin on something like that? So before returns would have been around nineteen okay. percent. After returns, realistically, maybe thirteen percent, twelve percent, maybe even less after warehouse rent and all that stuff. Okay. So how much how much net profit is that? I'm not good at math. So thirteen percent on twenty two thousand, like twenty five, twenty six thousand. That's pretty good. And how old are you? I'm nineteen. Wow! Beautiful! And is that is that your only source of income or are you doing other things in here as well? So we do prep um, and I also sell wholesale inventory to other Amazon sellers like shoes that I get in surplus and that mm. kind of stuff too. Why aren't they just selling it? Uh, I like to turn over the money a little faster. If I'd say I have another deal I want to put the money into, mm -hmm. you know, keep my suppliers happy, keep my clients happy as well. And why aren't they just buying it from the same place you are? Uh, they can't because I have connects they may, they may not have. I mean, you know, like that. You got the sauce. I got okay. I a little bit of sauce. What's the profit you said you did? around 20, a little over $20,000 in profit last month alone, just from selling on Amazon yourself. Mm -hmm. How about prep? How about uh, the, the wholesale? So December, well, November was a lot better for prep. December is also still pretty high for prep season. Um, but I'd say last month just on $32,000. Wow! 
And I know December is a, a better month, but what are you doing on average? Average, you know, 20, 25, it's good. I'm not gonna lie, I don't believe you. I right, don't think the viewers believe you. <laughs> 19 year old kid, let's see the sales numbers. All right, so last month, we did almost $211,000 in sales. And, and I could have done better. Can but you uh, refresh that real quick? I got you. Refresh real quick. Today's kind of you know, 1,400, that's cool. But that's December, almost 211,000. How does it, how does it feel making that much money at this young age. I don't see. I don't see a lot of my profit. I invest everything back in the business. So. Stop the cap. Fuck on me, yeah. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me, yeah. Fuck on me, yeah. Look at me, yeah. Fuck on me. Look at me. So I'll see you at a later date for sure. Once I liquidate everything and you know slow down a little bit, maybe mm -hmm. um, pull out some equity, I guess. But Will you ever slow down? If I have to, I mean, there's no point. Obviously, push as much as you can. Huh. We have this opportunity in front of us, and I've learned from mistakes in the past. If I have something in front of me, I gotta maximize it. I can't fuck around. So I know everything so far has seemed like sunshine and rainbows, but that doesn't mean it's always like that. And this was clear when Rich revealed how he lost $65,000. How'd your account get taken out in the first one? Dude, I bought like really, so I bought bad inventory basically from California. So I thought it was wholesale, but it really wasn't. They weren't authorized at all. Um, they had no brand recognition voices. And Amazon's like, all right, we think your inventory is counterfeit. Especially with FBA, because they are a lot harder about FBA because it's under their warehouse, yeah. and they have liability for that. So they're like, okay, we're gonna deactivate you guys. Some people just have like an email saying you'll get deactivated in two weeks. Some people like me, are like, okay, you got a call. If you pass the call, you're good. If you don't pass it, you get deactivated. So I obviously I didn't pass. I don't know. I just submit all my. I said invoices, LLC registration, um, Amex, all that stuff, lease agreement for the warehouse, all that, and I still had deactivated. Even my friend got deactivated. And that's why I have two phones. This is for my new account, but this one's my old account. Hey, you can show. This is the old account. With a mil. Yeah, almost a million for. How much is there money still in the account? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Reserve fifty-one thousand dollars stuck. It was sixty-four, but they start taking money, storage fee, this fee, returns, that stuff. And they're not gonna ever pay you that out. I hope they will. I mean, it's almost been. It's gonna in like May. It's gonna be a year since they have. So it. Amazon's holding fifty-one thousand dollars of yours. Previously sixty-four thousand, but now it's fifty-one. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do? Not much. I have I have lawyers working. Well, not lawyers. I have a appeal like team working on it. They submit appeals every week. Man, so is that like the biggest risk is just getting your account taken down? Yeah, because Amazon, they have, it's like third party. It's third party, so they can do whatever they want. They can deactivate you anytime. Like, I, have, I have 76 in that account right now. I can deactivate it. I'm like screwed. But, you know, taking proper precautions, keeping the account health healthy. Like, that's what, even like eBay, GOAT, StockX, your account can be at any time. It's up to them. Yeah. Do you think that's like the worst part about selling third parties? Like, it's not up to you. Yeah, that and then second is like returns, but first is you know whole count going away. Hmm. Have you always been entrepreneurial, or is this a, a more recent thing? Uh, always. I mean, in kindergarten, I tried to sell my like origami to like my kid, like, classmates for like a dollar. Like the paper. Like the little like the shuriken John like uh, those. Yeah. And sixth grade, the fidget spinner craze was like everything. Fidget spinner. You're selling fidget spinners. Yeah, fidget spinner. Walk me. What's the what's the loop? All right. So basically, I'll go to the park after school, after my homework, go to the park, chill there. And then the ice cream truck comes, and I saw he was carrying it for like ten bucks. I was like, okay, buy some for myself. No shot. You were buying fidget spinners from the ice cream truck? Yeah, bro. And then I was like, on a flip phone. I always like you know technology, so I bought cracked iPhones on eBay for like 25, 30 bucks. Uh, buy a screen for 10, 20 dollars uh, on Amazon, replace them, and then they sell them. Cause I like like, you know, tinker around with stuff. Uh, and then eventually I was like, I wanna go you know, take this to PCs cause I was in a PC gaming, playing like Fortnite and all that stuff. And I really wanna get like a nice game PC cause I had a pre-built. So then I took my personal one that my dad bought me, sold it for like a $50 profit, like 50 profit, but I didn't really yeah, pay for yeah. it. <laughs> so I took that and then I bought a, like a used PC on Mercari, put a better like, graphics card, you know, cleaned it up, sold it. I did that like seven to eight times. And I made like a thousand, my first grand from doing that. That was your first thousand? First thousand. By then it was like the end of 2019 and it was Black Friday. And I didn't want to go to the Black Friday sales, but I said, like, yo, let's go to the mall. And I saw one of my boys standing in line for Yeezy uh, restock. I was like, damn, yo, what's going on here? It's a huge line at Foot Locker. And he told me, yo, these Yeezys restock. I was like, which Yeezy Zebra? Is it like the yellow ones? He's like, no, nah, it was the black one. I was like, all right, bet. So I got the last pair of champs. Sold it for bid on StockX, so I was like a Mickey. So I made like 70, I still made $70 because they were restocked. Bro, that was a different time. Yeah, and then I went to Foot Locker, which is right next door, and I got another like six, seven pairs. So then I made that day, made like 70 pair times seven. So $409, one day. Wow. That's pretty out. good. Bro. Yeah, dude. I don't even know how to today, show That's pretty good. Yeah, you did. It's better than today. Yeah, you know, like, and then from there, it just grew. 2020, sneaker market exploded. I was at home because, you know, school wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. 
and I just took it to the max. Show me your, your best product. I can't do that. Oh, I can do all that. <laughs> I'll do something near the best. All right. And how do you pick out like what products are going to be profitable? How do you know what, what's going to be profitable? Yeah, so we use like data like set from Selleramp and Keepa. Check out profitability, sales volume, uh, price stability, and that kind of stuff too. Are they pretty easy to use? or? Uh, they take a little, keep it, take some time to master. Seller up is like the kind of high level view, just looking at everything. Got it. What converses? And how much do you pay for something like this? I paid twenty six dollars for those. After everything? After because yesterday had a good sale going on, so I got it from cheap. You ordered these yesterday? Yeah, they're here today. Okay, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it's good, and I can get it out today. Start selling by next week. And how much are you gonna sell these for? All right, yeah. So this is the one. So twenty eight fifty I paid. Uh, we could already in there because I checked it yesterday. Estimate sales thirteen hundred a month. That's across the whole listing. Uh, whole listing has two hundred eighty seven variations. So different colorways. Different yeah, different colorways. Some, some more than others. Uh, and the rank is fifteen k. So it's relatively like you know good. Mm -hmm. uh, max cost at forty one. So twenty fifty of course is really good. Um, I'm gonna scroll down here to the keeper graph. Um, this is just like the basic keeper graph. Um, I can't really you know you can't read too too much off of that. But I clicked the button to open the full keeper. And you can see this is a little bit of a slower shoe. Um, price was way higher before. Um, it's down now, but now the buy box is back. I know that from that pink line. What's the buy box? So when you go on Amazon, it says add to cart. Mm -hmm. That's a buy box. But if an item doesn't have a buy box, it just says see all buying options. There's no price, no mm. seller, no info, anything like that. And Amazon just chooses to suppress it sometimes. So most of the time for high price, uh, or if it's just like a slow listing, they'll do it too. You prep them, ship them out. They start selling on Amazon in a week. Yeah, just about a week. So, I mean, Amazon's receiving times definitely vary uh, across like, you know, different periods throughout the year. I mean, honestly, during December, it was pretty good because they had so many like, seasonal employees. Yeah. But now most of those people are gone. So it's a little slow right now. Um, it might be like a week and a half, two weeks to just receive. Okay. And how long will it take to sell through these? Um, I only bought, I didn't buy too many. I think I bought like 30 pairs total. Okay. So I'll probably say about like, a month, maybe a month and a half. Month. And so in theory, you buy it all. On what okay. card do you use? I use Amex Plum. Amex Plum, why do you use Plum? Um, because you can get 60 days to pay it. Time it right, you get more like 75 days to pay it. So if you start spending at the beginning of your cycle, um, then that cycle closes after 25 days, then you get another like, I think 20 days to pay it, normally just for that cycle. Then yeah. you get an extra 30 days to pay it just for being a Plum member. But you have to pay 10%, that's the like catch with it. But 10% is not bad. But I'm not gonna defer it to 75 days. I know I'll, I'll be able to pay it before then. Interesting, so in theory, you don't have to put really anyone up no, really. as long as it sells through. Exactly, you're just risking your you know capital, like credit capital yeah but scan real quick all right so my cost is 45 on these and these are pretty basic shoe uh they sell pretty well i sold like good five six hundred pairs of these another example of a basic shoe very nice and where are you buying these from or you... hey I can't say you gotta find that out yourself all right so walk me through the whole process start to finish as a complete beginner i know nothing how much money do I need? What do I do? What are the first steps I take? Walk me through the whole process. I mean, you can start with like a couple hundred dollars, but it depends on how you want to scale your business. Do you want to start, you know, go straight to a 10, 15 K a month? Mm -hmm. Obviously you need money for that. Yeah. Um, I've seen people start with books. That's pretty, I've never tried that industry before. Uh, there's companies that give away free Gaylords, which is a palette of books. Free what? Gaylord. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally called a Gaylord. So Gaylords are books. People get them. <laughs> bro, shut up, bro. But I mean, they get pallets of books sometimes for free or very heavily discounted prices. But that's only because, you know, there's hundreds of books to go through and scan. But I mean, you know, your capital invested is a lot less and the return can be a lot higher. It just is more work. I started my business with $500 and then eventually got into Amazon, but it all depends on your scale. Now, I usually recommend around $10,000 to start scaling just because, you know, account set up, having emergency funds and the funds just for product itself but you can at least get started selling with, with less money. Definitely, yeah. Speaking of getting started, I don't know if I showed you this yet, but we just made a full 75 page reselling blueprint and we're giving it away for free in our free Discord group. I'll put the link right down below. Click the link in the description, shameless plug. All right, what's the next step? So you found your product, you set up your account. Yep, check out, uh, loop the outlet, set up your account, get home, make sure you have the Nike Ungate um, or Ungate whatever brand you are selling. Again, link in the description. Yeah, get them on gates. So then you're actually allowed to send the product to Amazon or list up FBM. Um, I started with FBM and then got an FBA. So FBM is just listing it up. Once it sells, you ship it straight to the buyer. Um, so I list my first product. Nice. From the outlet and it sold within about a week and I was pretty excited. 
uh, shipped straight to the buyer. You know, I took pictures and everything just because it was my first shipment. It sold, got paid out within you know a week after delivery, and that's how it all started. If you were to buy stuff with Alley, you can do either one. I just did FBM because I didn't know how to do FBA, but FBA is similar, just you ship it to Amazon first. All right, and then, so you've done that once for one shoe and then you just repeat the process? Yeah, once I saw the method worked, kept doing the same thing, buying more shoes, finding products online, sending them in, doing some FBM, just to turn money over faster. And that's, that's how it grew. All right, so let's say you have the $10,000 in capital now. How quickly are you gonna see a return on your money and what type of returns can you expect? All right, so for 10,000, I'd say the first thousand is gonna go straight to business expenses. You know, 40 bucks for Amazon account, mm -hmm. some for you know, setting up an LLC if you wanna do that, mm -hmm. having some emergency funds. Then you have 9K to play with. I don't want you to spend all your money on products, so I'd say spend 5,000 on that. If you make about 25% on that after returns, you make a good $1,250. So 5,000, now it's 6,200. You can keep doing that. Now to get to that $10,000 profit per month goal, mm -hmm. um, I'd say you to spend maybe just around $90,000 to $80,000 a month. Just because of that scale, there's you know way more returns, uh, a lot more things that to deal with. Maybe for prep center, and you know your margin does go down at scale. So you net roughly 10%. Yeah, just about a yeah. little bit above that. Mm -hmm. All right, appreciate it.